I'm Jonathan Yee, and I will be talking about video games, and how certain games use style to create a world and bring about an aesthetic to the world created. Very often in games, we have a tendency to only care about higher and higher graphics, wanting all the characters to look lifelike and, have, and to have realistic reactions with their counterparts. But oftentimes that can be a detriment to the work at hand. Because of time constraints and resources, game companies can't al always allow themselves to have the highest setting for every single interaction that a gamer can make. Or even worse, some players might find the realistic faces creepy and fall into the unca uncanny valley. But something that I've noticed is that there are certain games that have been moving towards the opposite direction in terms of realism, and it actually has led to great success. But why has, d but why has downgrading led to better success? Well, it's because these games have a great art direction, or in this case, style. Style is the design or make in a particular form, and is actually very similar to aesthetic, which is a set of principles underlying and guiding the work of a particular artist or artistic movement. And what I'm saying is that leaning towards the idea of stylization has led to certain games coming with greater immersion. And by that, I mean how enthralled you are with the game. The game's look and gameplay all have to do with immersion. But today we'll be talking about just the looks or the graphics. The main idea is that the style of the game directly influences how you view it and your feelings towards it. This can lead to greater attraction to some people with an affection towards those styles, whether it be game look or gameplay, and that in turn can lead to greater attachments. So I'm, pro uh, so I'm sure that you probably understand that liking a style more can lead you to like a game more, but it can also help you exaggerate an aesthetic that the game can be vying for. Let me show you an example. This is a game called Bloodborne. Released in 2015, its graphics are still pretty impressive to today's standards, but a common remark in the positives of this game is that is its aesthetic. This game is set in a supernatural London-esque world where monsters and supernatural beasts exist. The colors are soft and muted, filled to the brim with cool lighting. Even when warm colors are introduced, they are often introduced with bl black or bleak colors and dark shadows to balance them out. But someone made a demake of the game, and it is astonishing how clear it comes out. While the graphical quality has been lowered, the same aesthetic still applies, and the look still comes through the, the art piece. You can still see that colors are muted, even though the TV lines and the use of colors lead to great clarity, even through the static. Developers can use style to dictate the art piece and give it an identity. But why do certain games feel and look the same? Well, it's because making a game not look pretty and perfect, and perfect isn't exactly appealing to investors within the game company. Games have been pushing for the idea that higher graphics lead to better games, but that's simply not true. All that does is increase the need for better hardware and the price for them. It's better, that games, it's better games that lead to better games. For example, when looking at an art piece like A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jat, compared to The Fallen Angel, both paintings are a clear mastery of two different styles, but have a completely different feel to them. It's the principle behind the artwork that lead to the difference. In conclusion, stylization is a design choice that developers can make to keep the game look great, even when on a budget, and I wish more game companies took notice, but all I can do is hope that they realize it.